So hello everyone and welcome to our webinar for Monday, April 27, 2015 for ICC Express and ICC Keyworks. And I'm glad everyone's with me today. Um, I haven't really created a huge um, lesson for you today, so I guess what I'll just do is create some content for this blog with ICC Express. And I still really like the way this thing looks, but it's not finalized yet, but I do like this. Um, the best thing that I can do is just create content, really. Does anyone here have any questions or anything that you'd like me to address before I just move in and start playing around with the content? Go ahead and put it in the chat box and I'll address whatever questions you have or anything. Alrighty then, I'm not seeing any urgent questions here. Let me <clears throat> close up a couple of things here. Okay. Whip out my trusty ICC Express. And last time I worked with Ghost Caught on camera, so I think I'll just try and do a few different uh, keywords for this blog today. Let's just see what we've got here. I think I'll go to my duration sources and see what we've got connected here. Quite a few. And we've got some, maybe I'll look at some UFOs. I was looking at some really amazing UFO stuff the other day, so I think that's what I will do is um, <clears throat> I'm going to post a couple of things that I, that I saw. And if I can remember, <clears throat> there was one about... Um, Um, Sarah's got a question. Why didn't I compress the blog's image? How do you know I didn't compress the blog's image, Sarah? Do you, are you absolutely sure I didn't compress it? You have to really see, um, how big. Hey Dana, uh, I'm talking and people are hearing me. So let's see if we can open link in a new tab. Um, I think it's quite compressed, Sarah. I, I sized it at exactly this size so that it would look good on the blog here and I did compress it it's large, it's, but it's compressed. And if I can tell you exactly how big it is, I'm not sure. Let's, we could save it and find out. It is 298 K bytes, which is still pretty big. But it's a, there's a lot of information in that image, right? So I could have left it at 2 megabytes, which is where it was. But I did reduce it down. I guess I still think, you know, two or 300 K bytes is pretty large. So I could probably compress it some more. But it is fairly rich with data, that image. So it may be hard to make it look good without making it, you know, without... Um, keeping it at some decent file size. Can you hear me yet, Dana? <clears throat> okay, so what I was saying before was I saw a really interesting UFO film um, a 
couple of days ago, and I'm going to see if I can find that one. Now, for our curation sources in here, I've got UFO sightings could be a good one. Mm. UFOs on the moon, UFOs videos. Let's start with UFO sightings for this one. So I'm going to go to settings, and I can just go UFO should match me, but and then I'll just save that because by saving the keyword here means that uh, that's what's going to be targeted when we go for content depending on what I choose. UFO sighting. I'm just going to click this one here. You can also click it on the right hand side and then save it. And then when we go to blog creation and bookmarking you'll notice that the UFO sightings up here is selected and auto matched. Now what that means is that if your blog has a category that is exactly the same as the keyword that you selected, then that is the category that's going to be targeted by the blog post. Um, the name of the user of that video was, I think it's called Secure Team. I'm going to see if I can search that. quite a lot of stuff about UFOs. It was called Secure. Let me see if I just pull it up with Secure Team. Don't, maybe that's not what it was. Let me try, I just want to find that one video, so I'm going to try my history and see if I can find UFO. Uh-huh. It's one of these, I believe. Let me just find the name of the user because then I can find the user. Secure Team, like I said, Secure Team 10. So let me find I'm not sure where that um, music is coming from. I already turned it off. Something that go plays from the YouTube channel. Guys, it's kind of cool. with Secure Team, the photos that you're looking at right now are from the Mercury mission, which was launched in December of 1960. This is the one I'm looking for now. I don't know why that thing is playing. No astronauts it's... were actually in the Mercury capsule. Hence, no eyewitnesses to any possible alien craft that may have shown up to observe the capsule. This is a bug <laughs> in, taken, in which the browser. I don't know why it's playing. Seen observing the capsule from Hold outside on. in space. Let me turn that off. Now I'm going to start again and yeah, go to that same channel. This is the one I'm talking about. It says detailed alien ship um, live ISS cam. And I thought it was quite remarkable. So I'm going to see if I can find that. Just search detailed alien ship and see if it brings that up. Yeah, here it is, right here. So I'm just going to click the blank tab because I don't want it to format everything in the post for me at this point. So I just want to get that video and I'm going to write something in here, so permit me a, a moment to just sort of write something here. Um, let me see.
Okay, so I've got that done. Um, Okay, so that part's done. You know, I might take a little bit more time and write. As usual, I don't really want to keep you hanging here waiting for me to write, so I'll just sort of keep it quick. Um, Yeah, don't really need much more than that to get some interesting content out there. So I'm going to go um, UFO sightings, ISS, UFO caught on camera, alien ship. Those will be my tags. And I'm not worrying about monetizing this blog yet. I'm also not worried about... Uh, posting it on Facebook. I'm just going to go ahead and post this one. I'm not sure if the thumbnail is going to be blown up the way I like it, but I do think it's going to grab the, the thumbnail. Okay, we're not seeing the thumbnail at all on this one. I'm not sure why. But there I've got some content and uh, like John, like you said, yeah, it definitely is um, better, you know, the more time you take to make your site look good. So we will be doing that. I may hire somebody to um, soup up this site. But you notice I, what I was talking about, you can see this shape right here in the, in the, the video. It's a really bizarre shape that comes up from the uh, live on the NASA feed. And it's like the... The film got cut off immediately as soon as that thing appeared, and so they're saying that um, NASA purposely cut the feed off as soon as that thing showed up. So I don't know. You can have a look at it and see what you think. Okay, so let's see what we what else we got. I'm going to make some more content while we're on while we're on it. What other topics might we want to address today? Um, let's do a UFOs on the moon. And I'll select that here, save it, and then I'm going to come back and open YouTube. <clears throat> And there certainly is a lot of stuff out there about this, if you're interested. Now, that looks kind of interesting. Undeniable alien bases uh, in HD moon rover video from a Chinese moon rover. Well, that looks kind of interesting. Let's see. Okay, so look. Growing a successful business is yeah, awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. We get it. Sure. You may be spending money to bring. It's like the same, um, same people. I think I could make a career of just curating this one user <laughs> secure team. They have so much interesting stuff. Um, It's pretty interesting that the guy just sort of keeps looking at all the published material and feeds from space uh, space programs around the world and just comes up with really a lot of interesting stuff. So let's just go ahead and and just do that one. 
which is, is it this one or is it, oh, is it this one? It was this one. Okay. So I shall insert that video, center it, do a little space. like to actually spend a little time viewing that movie. I haven't really had time to check it out. If I did, I'd probably have something more smart to say about it. Let me see what we got going on. Well, uh, not probably not the greatest article in the world, but sometimes it's just about getting content out with uh, keywords. Let's see. And the keyword we're trying to do is UFOs on the moon. Let's change this to UFOs on the moon. And that will match the keyword that we're trying to address here. Again, I, did, I haven't had time to really watch this video, so I don't have that much to say about it. That's really a problem here. So, And I'm not going to waste your time by sitting here and watching this video while you're on the webinar. But you can see how I do this stuff. Okay, and could actually schedule this, but if you want to schedule your post for later, like you do drip feed stuff, then you click this post date here, and then you set the date and time that you want that article to be published. I'm just going to publish it right now. Uh, now, what's not happening with this that I want to happen, and with the other one too, is the really cool looking cover photo on the blog. So I'm going to do something about that right now. <clears throat> and to do that, I'm going to uh, use the image selector, the image searcher here, and try to find some kind of uh, royalty-free images rather than using the YouTube screenshot because the quality of those are not great when you use a larger image. So let me try see what I can come up with in any of these. I don't think there's anything there. Let's try wiki And I'm going to try altering my keyword now if, if nothing comes up on Wiki Commons. Those, uh, maybe not too bad. What happens if I just save this one? Uh, 
And I think I'll just make a new folder on my desktop here. Um, and I'm going to just try UFOs now and see what we get. It kind of looks like some interesting images here. So if they're good, that's kind of interesting. Load up just a bit. And of course I should check as to whether or not I can use it without attribution and all that. So let me just take a look one more time. You go to the research page. And Creative Commons, Attribution, Bill Johnson, that's what they say, Bill Johnson, okay, so I'm going to do like this, I have this available in, in ICC Express, where I can go photo by Bill Johnson, and you see it's right here, I can put it over here, whatever. And that way we get around the attribution problem. And I will upload it to the blog. And you can see here that we do now have it on the blog. Let me just I'm trying to find some other ones, see what we can come up with. That looks kind of interesting. Do our research. <clears throat> and attribution, Ulrich Hartman. Okay, so we do the same thing. We do this icon, put photo by Ulrich Hartman, and you can put this right there. It's not really UFOs, but it's an interesting picture. Upload it to the blog. So now that's actually a piece of content on my blog. It has its own page, its own index if you want. Now if we go to see it on my blog, and you see it's got the attribution already right on the image for you. Now, I don't know if they're going to work for the featured image, but we can give it a try and just see. And I also don't think they're really the images that I want, but again, I don't want to waste your time by, you know, just kind of meandering around and looking for stuff. So we'll see the best way to apply this. And we'll go to my all posts. And you can now see the two posts that I just made. It says four hours ago, and this is an example of the time sync issue that we have with these kinds of softwares is that the server is in a different time zone so the, the server takes the time that I give it as its own time which would have been four hours ago. So I think that means the server is running on Greenwich Mean Time where it's actually 12.30 a.m. tomorrow.
and it's 8.30 p.m. here. Anyway, let's go ahead and that's not going to be, I'm going to find some more pictures though first before I do this. So let me go ahead and see what I can come up with. Could also use one of my VidWorks royalty free images if I want it. Try UFO without the S. Not really seeing much there. Try moon. So we want to get some, like, if I get a really spooky looking moon picture to go on that page, it would probably be really good. Okay. Now we're getting there. I like this. <clears throat> now what I want, those are really fairly large picture the largest one they have here is that's the preview 590 okay download all sizes so we're gonna go what's full resolution let's find out what full resolution is I don't think it's very big we will see how big is the full resolution that's the full resolution so I think that might be hmm, it's the wrong dimensions really but uh, We will try using this one is what we'll do. So I'm going to go ahead and, yeah, I was going to check the attribution too, right? So who's the attribution? Public domain. As a matter of fact, folks, there's like a huge amount of images from NASA that are completely free in the public domain. So if you want to use any images like this, you can get tons of them on NASA absolutely no attribution required completely in the public domain because us taxpayers paid for them. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get that one uploaded to our blog. And I'm going to try the default max width and height, and I'm just going to do like this and see if that'll make it work. Hey, Kevin, what's up? It's taken its sweet time. But it is it is there now. So now you can see we have this image here. Let's take a look at it on our blog. And it's a nice looking image, so what I'm going to do is see if I can make that to become the featured image on this blog. If I had sent an image with the post that uh, my auto post thumbnail would have grabbed that. So we go down here and we're just going to go to the featured image section. Open that up. And like I said, this would have been automated by ICC Express if I had put an image into my post, but I didn't. And I specifically didn't because I wanted to try to get this effect that I'm trying to achieve here with my, with my post. Okay, so I'll update that. And here is how it looks before. And then we'll 
refresh. And now we have this really, really super cool moon image at the top part of the, the post, which is super mobile friendly and, and really looks cool. Probably not the absolute best image I could ever do in my life, but it's, you know, it's, I think it's hip the way that thing works. I do want to do some redesign on this blog to make it not look like your typical WordPress 2014 theme, but uh, we'll get to that. Not sure did I ever install uh, tracking on this yet. It's something I should do pretty soon if I haven't already. Fine. Do I have PWIC? No. Do I have Google Analytics? Don't think so. Okay, so I'm going to have to put that on because I want to see how many people are, you know, cruising to this blog. Might not be very many now, but it might be quite a bit. Yeah, Kevin, the theme is just the typical WordPress 2014 theme. That's all it is. And I really like the way that works. I don't like the way that it looks like every other WordPress blog, so I want to make some alterations to it, but I definitely do like the way this blog works with the featured image and everything. Uh, let's see another one. Alien UFO sighting caught on ISS camera. Now I need something, an image for this page too to do the same kind of a look that I want to get. So I'll go back to my ICC Express and the look that I want for that one is going to be space like something from space. Again, NASA is a great place to get images like that. We can also just search. Oh, it's very mobile responsive, Kevin. Yeah, absolutely. You want to see? See, what? look what happens when I resize. So let me go to the other post so you can see the big image on there. Now, you know, a big screen, it looks like this. On a smaller screen, like a phone, it just responds beautifully and looks great, the whole thing, no matter what you do. Now, that's what responsiveness is all about. Now, I'm going to go here and I'm going to look for space. See if I can find another image that will do the same kind of thing that I just did with that moon image. Not not too much on wiki for space. Let's try Pixabay. Wow, cool. This has some really hip stuff. This one right here may be a good one. Because it's not really exactly what the looks like in the video, but it could be kind of mistaken for it. You know what I mean? Let's see what we got. It's very tiny, though. That's the only problem. I can ramp it up really huge like this. But it's pixelates, and if you do that. So that might not really be the one that I want. See what else we got. This is nice. Cosmic Nebula Space Universe. I really like this one too. It's a little bit too mm, artsy for what I'm trying to do here. Let's see what this looks like in our uploader. Now that's a tiny one too, unfortunately. Oops. Well, I think I'd like to go and visit that one on its home page and see if there's a larger version. At some point, I'll reprogram 
ICC Express to be able to get other versions. But look, yeah, you have some really big versions of this that you can download. So the idea will be to download, I'm going to download the medium version, which is 1280 by 1280, and it's pretty large, but I'll go ahead and download it. Um, and it wants a CAPTCHA. Three six. And we're waiting. And we have downloaded it already. And there it is. Okay, so let me see where that one's located on my computer. The heck? Oh, it went away. Downloads, shown folder, please. Sucks. Where did you go? Okay, there we go. So it's called Cosmic right here, and I'm going to... Um, I'm going to use ICC Express now. I'm going to go ahead and click this button here. It says Open File Operations. Go to my downloads and then open that image. Now it's in here. And you notice how I've got this EXIF operation. So I can put whatever kind of keywords that I want into that image, into the binary. So I'm going to call it uh, UFOs. Uh, what's it called? Something about um, UFOs in space or something. I, I kind of don't remember all the words from... Um, I'm really writing about my article, but I should put something more about the um, what's the pictures about, you know. But oh well, I'm just going to do this fast. I'm going to everything about UFOs in my keywords. I'm going to include so all this data here will get pressed into the image file, and after that, I will store it on my blog. So now not, on, not only am I putting an image on my blog, but I'm also putting these keywords up on my blog and Google will find them inside the image. And it's taking a little bit because it's kind of a long, uh, a pretty big file, I guess 600 K bytes. but it will be done. I think it's already done. I think they may have a little line of code missing in, in the ICC Express that I have to attend to, but if I open up my blog media library, okay, I'm not seeing it yet, so I'm not sure if something went a bit wrong with that or what. Perhaps I canceled the, the upload. I'm going to try it again. And just quickly get this all set up again. Sorry to repeat this, folks. I really don't know what went wrong. Every now and then something goes 
awry. So we'll try it again. Yes, you can do an F exit operation on a photo that needs curation, Judy. The only thing is you have to download it to your computer first. Um, I don't believe that it does it like in transit, if you know what I mean. So what you would do is download that image or get it somewhere on your computer, then open it in this applet right here. Uh huh. Exif is let's see if we can find exchangeable image file format. is a standard that specifies formats for images, blah, blah, blah. But that's not really what we use it for. It's um, EXIF tag structure is borrowed from TIFF files. Yeah, yeah, that means a lot, right? But it's for descriptive metadata. Okay, Dave? Descriptive metadata which can be embedded in a JPEG file. When EXIF is employed for JPEG files, the EXIF data are stored in one of JPEG's defined utility application segments. Now, you never know about this stuff because all you do is look at a picture or look at a file on your computer that says JPEG, but what's inside that file is not just image data, not just a picture, but also um, descriptive metadata also gets saved. And descriptive metadata is just text. It's just like tags and keywords like I, like I showed you. And that stuff gets saved uh, in the JPEG. And um, you would never know that yourself unless you go to um, your, you know, the file, and then I can show you that. Now, when I click on this file here, this is the one that I just downloaded, and you you showed. I mean, I showed you. You saw me download that from uh, Wiki or I believe Pixabay or Wiki, and then you saw me put the um, the data into it. And now you look here in the in this bottom. Uh, frame on Windows, you'll see all the data that I put into it. UFOs on the moon, all that stuff. UFOs in space, beyond paranormal. All that stuff is the EXIF data that I pressed into the image. Um, Sarah asked, when you fill in the EXIF info, does that erase the original image data? Absolutely not, but it does it may erase the, the EXIF data. It's not going to er erase the image data, but it does erase the original EXIF data that's in the image. I mean, you replace it, right? And that might not, you might not want to do that. I don't know. You might just want to do it as is, in which case, you know, don't use this part. Now, unfortunately, I, it looks to me like there may be an issue that's preventing that image from uploading. And I don't know what it is, so I'm going to have to do some debugging if it's not on the blog. Let me just see if it is. No, it didn't. It didn't get in the blog. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just transfer it without the EXIF data, and I'll do that debugging later. Actually, I'm going to do more than that. I'm going to just go to my blog and upload that picture. And I will do this specifically for the featured image on the uh, alien sighting.
so I will go over here and so I already have the EXIF data in that picture so I don't have to impress it again unfortunately the ICC Express function failed so I'm going to go and fix that after I get off this call in the meantime I will just upload this file from my downloads here and I already showed you that that image already does have the EXIF data that I put into it. So I'm going to go ahead and upload that. And wait just a moment. It's definitely taking its time getting all situated up there on my blog, the bloggity blog. <clears throat> That's awesome, John. I'm going to mention that. So, okay, now we got it uploaded. This is the exact one that I uploaded. And I will select that for the featured image. And now you see that featured image and then I'll update the post and then we'll go look at it. And let's see how that looks. Very nice. Beautiful. I just love it. Don't you like that? <laughs> I, just, I just love the way that looks. Uh, I, I really like this theme for um, for image related stuff so you guys probably know I'm just I'm just slammed with things to do every day so I don't have quite enough time as I would like to do my blogging you know so um, but given enough time put on a project like this it could just absolutely be amazing you know um, yeah so John said he was checking in Google and if you go if you Google what does Google think of curated content, then ICC Express comes up in page two. Well, that's good. It would be nice if it came up on page one, but I guess we're working on that. And that's Google.ca, he says. Okay, cool. Okay, so there's two new posts, and I'm not trying to claim that I'm providing the absolute best value in every post but the in a, in a blog like this for me it's going to be more about quantity I mean quality is good of course it's necessary but in terms of the uh, these kinds of curated videos and stuff there is just sheer volume of it on YouTube so there's no reason that I cannot just absolutely fill up this blog with post after post of this kind of material and then ultimately get readers you know on the blog of people that are interested in um, this kind of stuff and Sarah wants to know how do I plan to monetize a blog well the first thing is to get the, the readership up, right? So I'm not even going to, and I said that at the beginning of this, I'm not even going to worry about monetizing this blog. Um, and it may take me a while to get the readership going. And I know I need to change the design, make the design a little bit better. Probably um, we will um, edit this theme to make the theme be more of what we want it to be. And then we'll put the tr uh, stats tracking on it. We'll see how many people are hitting this blog. And once we start to get a decent amount of people on this blog, then I will start to monetize it. The main thing is just getting people interested in it first. And I haven't even taken step one of that, which means that I need to put the tracking on it. And... Um, put in Google Webmaster Tools, put Google Analytics, and maybe even um, pay a couple dollars to have somebody out there doing some off-site SEO for me.
Okay, guys, so um, we are coming up to the top of the hour, and that hour went pretty fast. I would like to ask you guys if there's anyone out there that has any questions or anything that you'd like me to address before we call it a night tonight. And I'll give you a few moments. Let's see what we got going on with. So if I click UFOs on the moon, my category here. Thanks, Bruce. I appreciate it. So if I kick that, uh, click that category, then you can see I've got that post shows up under the category. If I go to UFO sightings, now I've got this post under that category. The idea is to have, you know, lots of content under all the categories. And that will, you know, some of you already know this, but some of you may not really believe it. But the fact is that the more that I do just even this, this simple content creation like this, the traffic will start to pick up because of these terms and these keywords, even a keyword that you haven't even got a clue that someone's searching, that that person will come to your blog and you have no idea because you never even targeted that keyword. It's just a lot of it happens by accident, but it's a, it's a numbers game. Like, so the more content that you actually get out and you see how I do follow keywords. I go with the area, but I'm not like a, I'm not strict about it, but I'm kind of generally do follow the keywords, and that will help keep your audience in the, the basic area that you want them to be in, in terms of topics that they're looking for, you know. Awesome, Sarah. I'm glad you, you're, you're learning from this, and, and Bruce, and, and everyone else. So does anyone have any questions about this or anything? I'm awesome, Judy. I'm so glad. I'm so glad when people, when you guys tell me you're learning from this, it just makes it all worthwhile. So that's great. Just great. Um, so I guess we're coming to the end of the session here. We've got two new pieces of content. This week it was um, UFOs, last time it was ghosts caught on camera. Um, and next week, who knows, maybe it'll be out-of-body experiences or uh, psychokinesis or something. Who knows what, it, what topic we'll address. So the idea is just to go around, around and around and around and touch every topic a little bit and eventually this whole mosaic will be put together and it will just be a huge keyword pull. Okay guys, so if there aren't any more questions, I think it's about time to bring it to a close tonight. I think we'll go out with that really nice galactic image. There we go. Okay, John. Hey, it's my pleasure. And um, again, I don't want to leave you guys hanging. If there's anything I can answer before I go, um, you know, speak up. Um, otherwise, I guess we're just going to go ahead and bid everyone a fond good evening until next time. All right then, guys, so um, you guys have a great, great week, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks again for coming. It's Hugh out. Good night.